Can you count the number of red flags on this approach? When your briefing approaches, one thing you don't want to miss is any threats or unusual hazards on the approach. Things like extended segments over open water or low, close-in obstacles. Approach plates don't come with blaring warning signs, so unless you're looking for the red flags, this approach into runway 26 at Danbury, Connecticut can seem like any run-of-the-mill RNAV. Let's look closer. First, there's a big right turn right at the final approach fix. Most approach courses will be straight from at least the intermediate fix through the final approach fix all the way to the missed approach point. But here, we have about a 30 degree right turn right at the point we should be getting configured for final approach. There's probably a reason for this, and it's probably because of terrain on the extended center line of the runway. At the runway itself, we see a number of obstructions, including one right underneath us on short final. It's at about 755, plus or minus. So at our MDA of 1020, we're a mere 265 feet above it. If we descend too early from MDA, we could be in danger of impacting it. The final approach course is offset from the runway by 5 degrees. Again, approach designers typically give us a straight in if they can, so an offset like this suggests some obstructions, which we did in fact see to the left side of the approach course. Looking at the runway, there's no Pappy or Vasi lights, which would be indicated by a P symbol with a circle on it to the side of the runway. If there is terrain on the extended center line of the runway, a Pappy light wouldn't offer us safe guidance down, which is also likely why the approach course is offset from the runway. The runway has a very displaced threshold, shown by the two oval symbols down the runway. A displaced threshold is typically there for obstruction clearance for landing aircraft, giving us more clues as to what's going on. The vertical descent angle is listed as 3.77 degrees. The standard is 3, but it seems like something is stopping us from making that shallower descent angle. Finally, and this shouldn't be a surprise, there's no option to do an LPV approach. We have two MDAs an LP, localizer performance, and an LNAV, lateral navigation. The LP gives us a more precise localizer if we're WAS enabled, but no vertical guidance like on an LPV. Here's the approach. Here, we're arriving at the final approach fix. You can see the runway at about our one o'clock. When we intercept the advisory glide path, and yes, there is an advisory glide path, we'll start down. But we'll also be making that 30 degree turn onto the final approach course. Even then, we're still 5 degrees offset from the runway, and we can see the hilly terrain that sits right on the extended center line of the runway and goes up off to the left. That's not the only obstruction. As we noted on the approach plate, there's a little hillock sitting just on short final. As we get to MDA and level off, we see just how much of an obstruction that is. We can't maintain a continuous descent angle here and not get too close to that hill. In fact, we'd only cross it by barely 100 feet if we stayed on the advisory glide path. So indeed, there are some special threats on this approach we might not appreciate if we don't incorporate it into our brief. Unfortunately, approach plates don't come printed with difficulty ratings like easy, medium, and hard. So we need to assess risks ourselves by looking out for these red flags. For more expert IFR training, check out our full suite of courses today at the link here and in the description.